Christmas celebrations wrap up, the new year approaches with a distinct feeling of new beginnings. With that, many decide to make New Year's resolutions. Some choose to stop drinking or start exercising. Others learn a new language. Well, and there are those who want to lose weight, eat better and get healthier. Our guest, Bola Nile Olatunji, the father of vegan in Nigeria, believes all these food goals can be accomplished by going vegan. And this will stop you from enjoying delicious, satisfying meals if you're a meal lover. I wonder, really. Welcome to the morning show. Uh, glad to have you join us, uh, Bola Nile Olatunji. Interesting there. By the way, let's begin by asking you how you celebrated Christmas. Uh, yeah, how did you celebrate Christmas? Merry Christmas. Greetings, seasons, greetings and compliments. Thank you for having me. Uh, yesterday was just a very restful day for me. Um, and there are also some children that are, uh, that are on my street that I basically catered to. We did some yoga and swam, so just had a relaxing day yesterday. Good, fantastic. That's what it's supposed to be. In very simple terms, yes. Bola Nile. Uh, uh, tell us what vegan is. I I'm sure that people call you Bolande because, I mean, this is like a new one on me, Bolanile, you know. Yeah, it's the original name, actually. Bolanle comes from Bolanile, so you can actually also call me Bolanle. It's all one and the same. Or you Good. can call me Bola. It's all the same. So. Good. So, in simple terms, yes. what is vegan? So, vegan basically is a person who subscribes to a plant-based lifestyle, one that basically eats no animal products or animal byproducts, and lives basically uh, in harmony with nature. So they, we don't consume any fish, meat, chicken, cow, ram, lamb, anything with the face basically. And also no egg, no dairy, no milk, no yogurt. Um, but there are plant-based alternatives that we substitute these items with. Um, for instance, like there's coconut yogurt. So instead of having dairy yogurt, you can have coconut yogurt. Instead of having eggs, people use aquafaba or chickpeas or sometimes even like soy. Um, so there's alternatives. So we still eat familiar foods that people know, but we just don't uh, take any animal products or byproducts. You know what that sounds to me like is saying no Christmas. <laughs> 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 Not at all. It's, it's actually quite the celebration. You know, you you feel great. You look great. Um, for instance, um, I have a second brand called Thrive, and I've a few months ago after the COVID lockdown and things started, I started doing monthly fast. I started doing it for myself, and then I opened it up and started doing it collectively as a group. So for seven days, we liquid fast, and we take anything from juices, smoothies, tea, water. Um, as, long as, as long as it's a liquid, we take that for seven days straight. No breaks, no cooked foods, no, no solid foods at all. And, you know, different people join this for different reasons. Some people for weight loss, some people for, uh, to address certain ailments. Um, some people, maybe they have fertility issues and they just want to create, uh, um, correct certain things within their body. And others just to detox and feel good and reset themselves, you know. And it also helps in terms of cravings and these sorts of things. So. You know, in doing this, these are people who are vegan, non-vegan, they participate and they get all sorts of benefits from it. And since doing that um, challenge each month, uh, the last month we we did it, at the, started uh, in November 30th, I actually decided to continue on. And since that point, I have actually been raw vegan, meaning I have not had any cooked food since before the 30th of November. And I feel great, I feel light, I feel healthy. I'm generally actually very healthy. I do my um, yearly checkups and my, my health is, I'm at the top of my health. So um, these are things that I do to maintain good health in the body. And especially in times right now where, as you know, we're facing a pandemic and all of these you know, ailments, it's, it's very imperative for us to prioritize our health and wellness. 
Well, Amile, I'm so happy that you talked about discipline uh, because it's going to take a lot of it to subscribe to a vegan lifestyle. And I'm speaking from experience, Indy. I know you might not know. Okay, I want to know. But I've formerly <laughs> been vegan. Oh, really? Yeah, it was 24 hours. What happened was we had just finished watching uh, Beyonce's homecoming documentary. And she had obviously talked about losing her baby weight from having her twins by going vegan for like 70 days or so. Something like that. Something like that anyway. And I just thought, wow, that sounds fantastic. Let me try it out. I did try this out while I was in London. So it was a day, three meals, no, um, you know, no meat products, no dairy, no nothing. It was like, <laughs> so like, <laughs> this, this is where I'm going, right? Because it was, I remember having to, because I was at work that day, I had to order two of my meals. I think it was my, 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 uh, my lunch and my dinner. Both were very soy infused. I think one was like a, a Vietnamese soup with soy inside. And the last was a chickpea soup. I can't remember what I had for my breakfast. But that was me in the UK with access to all of these different alternatives. Here in Nigeria, I can only imagine it being... Well, maybe I'll put this question to you. How easy is it for somebody to subscribe to a vegan lifestyle? Because, I mean, I wouldn't blame someone who says, you know, if you can't have any dairy products, no animal products, no flesh, you know, does that mean we're going to drink Gary morning to night? So, like, tell, tell us about the alternatives that people can have and how easy it is to subscribe to a vegan lifestyle here in Nigeria for a beginner. Well, it is relatively easy. It's, it is something that is new to a lot of people. So it does take some research and learning because you want to make sure you're getting proper nutrients in any lifestyle that you subscribe to. So if it's something new, you want to do your research and be able to know, you know, foods that are plant based and are rel relatively available. For me, I think it's best to stick to a whole food plant based which means less processed foods and sticking more to foods as it comes from nature. That's going to be the most healthiest for you. Um, and it can be as affordable as you want it to be based on eating seasonally, eating locally, um, and eating what's available, available and grown, you know, in your environment. So yes, we do have alternatives for dairy. There's so many plant-based milks that you can buy in supermarkets. They have soy milks, they have coconut milks. There's even actually brands, made in Nigeria brands, that are also producing and making these items. So, you know, coconut milks, uh, almond milk, uh, you have any sort of nut milk you can think of, or seed milk, it can produce a milk. And the best I do for myself, I actually make it myself. My favorite is hemp seed milk. You can make hemp seed milk in about one minute. You you literally take the hemp seeds, you boil it with, uh, you blend it with some water for about 30 seconds to a minute on high. You can be fancy and add other things like sea salt or dates with it if you want, but it's not um, required. And you can have a milk. So milk is not an issue. Um, yogurt, as I said, there are uh, Nigerian brands who are locally producing and making coconut yogurt, soy yogurt. Um, for meats, my favorites are uh, like mushrooms are great. You could use like chickpeas as well. And then you have some brands um, that are also making uh, meat alternatives like from soy or um, pea protein. And you know, those are options that are available, local brands. You can go on our page on Instagram, Vegan in Nigeria. We help to uh, promote some of these local brands in our community so that people People are aware these things are available we have monthly meetup events it's now become virtual so anybody from anywhere can join and we have some of these brands that come and do demonstrations so people can see their products that are plant-based and sh show them how they can incorporate it our last one we had um, last month there was a brand that made a, um, a suya pizza you know with cheese you know but it was a, a coconut uh, based cheese that she made and she made the sausage herself and she made a suya pizza and it was so lovely I tasted it myself and it, so we have these brands that are here it's just for us to be, become aware of it and as I said, even if you're looking for plant-based options, you could even go into the open market and you can see so many different things that you can sustain yourself for very cheap. You know, we have lettuce, we have tomato, onions, uh, okra, we have greens, ugu, tete, you know, shoko. We have all the greens that you can think of. You know, we have, um, you can make soups with these things. You have, of course, all the fruits and you have watermelon, pawpaw, bananas, oranges, limes, um, so many options in a that if you look at all of the things that we have that you can 
just become creative and start to make different things. I actually also brought some sample things. I thought I was going to be sitting with you, but I brought some sample things with me here today. Fine, we'll get we'll get that. I definitely want to look at it. Suya pizza. Yes. I don't know how that sounds and that how looks how that looks. Anyway, I didn't know that my colleague here. Uh, has tried her hands on I have. veganism. veganism. I'm a modern woman. All right, well, fine. Uh, become aware. Let me ask uh, the same question in a different way uh, because it will still bring out some things that um, uh, Femi was pursuing, and that is that, um, let's see. Uh, it, um, let's see. All right. Uh, there must be challenges, Bolanile, I mean, to living this way. What are there? And how are young? How are you working around them? You know, uh, to support people who want to sincerely live this kind of life, who are now finding it very difficult uh, to live this kind of life, because it's sounding to me like it's difficult, really. It's not as difficult to me. It's mostly mental. That's the the most of the challenge is just mentally getting over the fact that you know this is a different way of life and adapting to that. Um, but there are some challenges for people. Um, people in terms of knowing what to eat, knowing where to source the items, and just overall support in that transition um, can be challenging. Uh, some of the things that I'm doing to uh, help solve that challenge. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach, so I do have clients that I do work with and supporting them with meals, also um, supporting them with herbs, and I do uh, private uh, um, vegan cooking lessons for them as well. Um, that can be done virtually or in home, and you know these sorts of things sort to help. People, people also ask where to buy ingredients and buy things. I can also help to source for people if they if they can't be bothered. I can direct them to where to buy certain things, but if they just want to have it, you know, items delivered, I can also do that as well. So um, it's just basically takes planning. It does, you know, and it takes you know a willing heart to be able to learn something new. But once you learn, and I, I've seen people sort of you know try and put that effort forward and they've grown and they've learned so much and they they it's 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 taking it slowly i think is the best thing and not to overwhelm yourself and just do everything at once and as the other um interviewer mentioned there are so many benefits to it you know you lose weight effortlessly you feel great you are your healthiest you know especially people who have um health conditions, um, it's, it's important for them. They are able to reverse some diseases in the body and help the body to maintain, you know, good health and wealth. I do a lot of exercises. I don't joke with my exercises. Uh -oh. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> it's time for us to take a very short break. Uh, when we come back, we will be continuing our discussion on veganism right here in Nigeria. Please do stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still joined by Bolanile Olatunji, who is the founder of Vegan in Nigeria. Uh, Bolanile, I wanted to ask you, we're going to talk about the food that you brought there uh, just, just in a minute, but I wanted to talk to you about something a little more serious before we now have some real fun. And that is, I, get, I would say, I would ask you, do you think that veganism has ever gone through a period of whitewashing where it was the white narrative of white people who took control over veganism? Because ultimately, it, to some people, it may sound like a modern phenomenon, something that people in LA do after going to yoga, not eating meat products, not staying away from gluten and all of those things, when actually there is a huge and very diverse history behind veganism, the fact that lots of rest of in their religion and culture don't eat meat, haven't eaten meat for the wellness of the body for a long time. So in your personal experience with veganism, do you think that the, the narrative of the movement had been controlled by non-black people? Um, there's a lot of misconception in terms of the lifestyle and that it is something that is foreign to us when in fact a lot of our ancestors was largely actually plant-based and through colonization and slavery we have evolved to uh, consuming animal products. 
Um, and as you mentioned, there are different communities and people like the Rastafarians and people who have been plant-based for a very long time. And uh, as of recent, it has become a bit of a fad in certain places like that, LA, New York, London, you know, places like that where it's become trendy, where people, they, they know of the benefits and, you know, they, they subscribe to it, but it is, a, it is in a sense of um, it being a sort of uh, in thing to do. Yes, it's become popular, um, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that you know, people are adopting it for that reason, as long as they adopt it, it's the most important thing because it's something that's truly gonna be good for them. And you know, I, being in this community, I've seen a lot of people um, who are of African descent uh, start to sort of uh, transition and adopt the lifestyle, um, especially uh, after the whole, I'm an alkaline vegan, so uh, alkaline vegans are those who subscribe to Dr. Sebi's methodology of the African biomineral balance, which, you know, Dr. Sebi was a herbalist who uh, helped people um, to reverse a lot of diseases. Nipsey Hussle talked about, a bunch about him. Uh, former Lisa Left Eye Lopez also talked a bunch about him. So people can look up Dr. Sebi. And, you know, based on that, which he's also actually supposed to have a documentary coming out about his life, which Nick Cannon is uh, producing, helping to produce. Um, a lot of people who look like you and I have start to transition and become interested in the alkaline vegan lifestyle and wanting to basically uh, promote good health uh, in their life. So um, it's basically coming full circle, which is a good thing, um, but it definitely originated with us. And uh, we sort of moved away from it based on um, Western or European domination. Right. Uh, all right. Uh, let, I, I'll ask you this question after we see, because I saw snippets of what uh, it looks like. I mean, the food, you know. So and, and I saw suya there, which is the did one. You? I, I think I did. I, did you? Which is the one. Okay, that's the suya. Oh, wow, you really did. Good, yeah, which I would like to taste uh, uh, probably after the program. I like to taste it because I can't taste it right now. But if you are close to me, maybe I would have had a, a bite or two. Then that's the suya. That's the pizza suya, right? That's the, no, this is actually mushroom suya. Um, it would be awesome for you to have, have you try it. If someone wants to bring it around to you, that would be great. Um, yeah, this is the mushroom suya. This is not the one from the pizza, but uh, I did bring some snippets from my Thrive brand for you guys to try. And um, yeah, the second one that you're seeing there is uh, my OG Kale uh, Super Food Salad. Um, so th that, that's um, the salad that you're seeing there in the, vid, uh, in, the, in the film. And this is more like a meal. So these are, this is some of the things that I'm eating currently right now that I'm raw and still getting a lot of nutrients. It has kale, it has a bunch of different things, the tomatoes, um, onions, olives, um, tatashe. So it's rich in many different minerals, iron and vitamin C, um, so many different things that are great for the body, uh, proteins as well. Um, and there we have my, um, what I call my fried chick, C-H-I-K, not chicken. And this is also mushroom based and it tastes very similar to like fried chicken. And um, a lot of my clients do enjoy it as well. So just to show you that the lifestyle can have some things that are similar and your things that you're familiar with um, and still be quite tasty and enjoyable. Yeah, Femi likes chicken. So when she <laughs> saw it, when she when she, when she when she when she saw it initially, she said, "This is chicken." I said, "You're forgetting we're doing veganism. It can't be chicken." It can't be chicken. I have so many clients who sometimes they'll order it and they'll call me after, like, "Wait, is this prawns? Is this chicken? I can't have this." And I'm like, "No, of course I wouldn't give you chicken or right. meat." So it tastes very similar. So it gives people that satisfaction of texture right. and taste. Let me ask you this: When you say people should give up. When I was reading this, I was feeling, I was looking up and down and sideways, I was feeling. When you say people should give up consuming animals as food, stop wearing animal first fur, animal fur, fashion, uh, or skin leather, I mean skin leather shoes, for example. Do not support animal labor or slavery by going to zoos. I mean, we'll go to zoos to watch animals, and you're saying do not support that. And, 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 and aquariums or riding animals like horses, you know, which is a form of transport, I am saying, ha, 
Ha, but that's taking this too far, Bolanile. What do you, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. well, some people feel like it's taking it too far, but uh, it's not really. It's basically, again, living in harmony with nature, which we as Africans, we have in the past, this is the way we used to live. We used to actually have uh, so a mutual respect for other living beings. And it's not necessarily for us to exploit or feel like we have uh, the right or we're any better, because we're all creation. At the end of the day, we're all divine creation. And we all have a purpose on this earth. And our purpose, is, no one's purpose is more greater than the other. And so yeah, in terms of going to zoos, a lot of animals are exploited in zoos. So an alternative would be, instead of keeping them in cages, because zoos are basically uh, prisons for animals. You know, they're exploited, they're, they're not able to live uh, in nature as they're meant to be. And a lot of them have a lot of sicknesses that we as humans have. You'll see animals in zoos, they'll have cancers, they'll have a lot of things that we as humans have because they're not in their natural environment. So instead of going to zoos, you can go to a safari, which if you go to a safari, you or yourself as a human, you're going in their environment to observe them. And that's more acceptable instead of taking them out of their natural environment where they're meant to be and encaging them just for our own benefit. That's not right. To me, well, it doesn't sense. sit well, you know? That does. And also, um, you mentioned about riding animals. Yeah, it's, it's one of the things for me as well. It's like, I wouldn't want a person to ride on me. So I just, I, I wouldn't necessarily feel, okay, I'm just going to get on and ride an animal. You know, there's a, so, there should be some form of like um, love and respect, I feel, you know, and not to just feel, ex to exploit them, you know. As it stands, we're running out of time now, so I'll ask you very quickly. As it stands, I think many people would be quite comfortable with the belief that there are far more meat eaters in the world than there are vegans. Um, and some people may argue that in countries like India, for example, where beef isn't eaten by a huge part of the population for religious reasons, it is taking a toll on the environment there. The amount of greenhouse gases being put into the environment because there are so many more uh, cows there. So do you think that there is an argument that perhaps veganism isn't, is harmful for the environment or no? No, actually quite the opposite. Veganism uh, or vegan lifestyle, plant-based lifestyle helps the environment. It's actually environmental, environmentally sustainable, in fact, because a lot of these animals, cows and you know farm animals, they're being bred and far uh, farmed for our benefit. And if we, are, if we were not to do such, they would not uh, necessarily um, be an issue. Uh, the problem is that we are forcibly impregnating them for our own benefit because we want to have meat or dairy and things like that. If you look at, you know, you mentioned in India, you know, Indians... Uh, I have to say, sorry, we have to end our discussion oh. there. We really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, it much, is much more time than this. Exactly. <laughs>